I want to take a moment and make a very important announcement for those people who consider themselves a remnant. Our monthly meetings are normally the first Saturday of every month. However, in May and June, they will be combined into Memorial Weekend so we can have the entire weekend uh, to focus on God and also make sure that we remember those who laid down their life for us here in the USA. Welcome to a series called He Trains My Hands for War, where we're going through the book of Joshua verse by verse because it is by far the best example of what it means for a group of people to not only be in the army of the living God, but to follow him in his instructions every step of the way and seeing the success after success after success every time they followed his instructions. And when they didn't, all of a sudden that success went away pretty quickly. And it's very important we do this because I believe, as many of you believe, that we are living in a day where we will see uh, his second coming, where we will see a time of trouble, a three and a half years of tribulation, and being able to navigate through that. Uh, it's very important you understand what it means to be part of the army of the saints in the war of the saints. Um, God is not a changing God. So where we are in this book is we're about to hit chapter three. Well, we're going to start chapter three today. And we have seen that uh, spies went into Jericho. The, they came back with a report very different than what their ancestors did 40 years ago. Uh, they said it was just like God said it was. Their ancestors before them said it was just like God said it was, but I'm horrified of it. Let's go back to Egypt and be slaves. So they had to wander the wilderness for 40 years. Their ancestors, now this generation says it's just like God said it was, let's go take it just like he told us to. And that's a huge difference. They're following his direction every step of the way. Uh, so we're just gonna pick it up where that report is kind of finalized and we'll go to Joshua three, verse one. Then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now these first instructions on crossing the river, we're gonna spend a few episodes on these because uh, they're, they're important. <laughs> all of them are very important because uh, they're all at some sort of a direction of laws and rules that God had put on their ancestors on how they navigate that Ark of the Covenant and how the priests navigate things and where who goes and who goes first and how far away you should be. It's all extremely important. But today I kind of want to focus on the thing that Joshua said in verse five. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I want to start there because understanding how to cross the river begins with sanctifying yourselves. Uh, Joshua knows this to be true and, and I am certain that nobody gave him any argument in any of this. And sanctification is, is extremely important. It's sanctifying. It's, it's becoming sinless, becoming righteous, sanctifying, focusing on the things of God, trying your hardest. You know, of course, we live in the world. And as you're going to see with Joshua's people, pretty quickly people start to fall. Uh, not everybody's sanctifying themselves as they should. Even in Joshua's group, who again were the strongest, single strongest army of the living God that ever walked the earth because they were incredibly obedient. Everybody before them, everybody after them, their armies weren't that obedient. Uh, you know, it, the, the armies of the living God, let's say. Uh, so sanctification is something that we have to really take deep into our heart and talk about 
and pray about and meditate on and change. And even, you know, as I begin this series, it's about life changes. It, you know, you, you can't just be your normal old self one day and then be in the army of the living God the next. It doesn't work that way. It, you know, as we've talked about through this series, and hopefully you've been watching the series, because, you know, the only point watching the series, you know, two points. One, you just want to learn about the book of Joshua. Two, you want to know, well, what do you got to do to be, you know, obedient to the things of God in the army of the living God? What does that really look like? And really the major things we've seen is number one, they believed in prophecy. Number two, they were obedient enough to when the world looked scary, prophecy said one thing, the world said another, they completely shut out what the world had to say and they walked straight into what prophecy said to do. And that's exactly why this world is in the condition it is because the enemy, Satan, and a third of the angels that fell to this earth are in a constant state of trying to stop the things of God. So everything that is of God is going to look a little scary when you look at the world with your eyes. Uh, but when you look at what the word of God says, that will never die. Even when heaven and earth passes away, the word of God will never pass away. To know that to be true and confidently walk into it, even though it looks scary. And this is what these early this is what this generation of Israelites had to do. And then be, but before they can even do that, like they were going to, you know, they were going to do it. Like we're doing it. They knew they needed to sanctify themselves. You know, you can't, we should be in a daily waking up and sanctifying ourselves. We should try to wake up and sanctify ourselves to prepare ourselves for that day. Um, you know, Job did it every morning for him and his family. And, and it, that's the oldest book in the Bible. You know, it's the oldest, probably the oldest complete text in the planet. But he did it every morning. You know, it's something that we have to begin to really take seriously because the world says our sin's okay. You know, the world says it's okay. Uh, but the reality is, is, is it, it is not okay. Times change, laws change, generations change, cultures change. God doesn't change. He doesn't change. And that's the importance of understanding what it is to sanctify yourself. Well, how do you sanctify yourself? Well, pause for a second and pray, find a quiet place, pray. And the very first thing you say is, God, show me what it is that I'm doing wrong. What is it I'm doing that you don't approve of? And I guarantee you, he will show you that thing. And you can deny him or you can sanctify yourself. Now, in order to go into the army of the living God, there's a there's sanctification that has to take place. Um, I need to do that as well. And I'll have, even if I pulled it off successfully today, which I doubt, I need to do it again tomorrow. And then I need to do it again the next day. And then I need to do it again the next day. Because the other thing that these Israelites did, which God said, follow the law, follow the law. Make sure you follow the law. Be strong and have good courage. Follow the law is what God said. And it's easy to say, well, well, you know, well, we don't have to obey all the Ten Commandments. You know, like I could pick and choose the ones I do and do not want to obey. But if you are realistically sanctifying yourself, you will follow the Ten Commandments. Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. There you go. So stay with us. I hope these videos are helping. Any thoughts or insight on any of that, definitely put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called to support this channel with Patreon. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns. Thank you.